Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video. For those of you who've been following the channel, don't worry, I am still working on the FPS game or the FPS series, uh, which is set in a sci-fi universe. I'm not abandoning the project. Don't panic. Don't worry. But I know those of you who are indie developers understand that working on the same project for a consistent period of time can become tedious and monotonous and I don't want the project that I'm currently working on to get the impact or receive the impact of that. At the same time, I also wanted to challenge myself a bit more and improve my skills as a game developer. So I took my notepad out and started to think what would be a good uh, idea not just for a game but to make a video out of and one of the first thoughts that came to mind was that I always wanted to make a football game. However, I have zero skill when it comes to designing and modeling players as you can probably tell from my previous videos. So I decided to keep it pretty simple. All we really need for a football game is a ball and a cube and a cube. Having decided on the type of game I was going to create and experience playing football games, I felt like I had the blueprint I needed to go ahead and start making the game. And the first step wasn't that different to most games that I make, and that was creating a movement script. And for whatever reason, I decided to create player movement using the rigid body, and I've come across problems and challenges with that in past video games, and that's probably down to my lack of knowledge as to when is best to use the rigid body versus, you know, the character controller or other forms of movement, such as using the transform. But in this scenario, it seemed to work fine, so I stuck with it. Once we had the player moving around the plane, the next step was to get the camera to follow us. And this was the next big decision, and it's actually a big decision for any game because depending on whether you want to have a first person camera or a third person camera or over the top, it's going to alter the user experience. And initially I thought it would be a good idea to have an over the shoulder camera where you can see your player moving around the map. Next I added some jumping, some goals, and of course we all know that Einstein said you can't play football with ball. I then used Pro Builder to add a makeshift stadium. So now we can move the player around and use simple physics to simulate scoring a goal. And that's it, and that that's the football we made a football game. The end. The next thing I felt was missing was some form of rotation because at the moment it's difficult to control the ball and it's already difficult to control the ball when you're a cube and being a cube is pretty hard, life as a cube is hard. So I went ahead and made a rotation script for the cube. I also felt like in this scenario it made sense for the player to rotate based on the camera rotation so I added that in. Now at first I had a few difficulties trying to get the rotation of the camera and the player to work. Well um, yeah you can sort of see that. But after some reading and looking up, we eventually managed to get it to work. And for those of you interested, a book that helped me was Unity in Action by Joseph Hawking. He literally has a third person script there that's very useful, and I altered it slightly to make sense for the uh, football game. Now that the player movement and camera movement looked a lot smoother and we could move the player around the pitch, the next step was to actually create an opponent. And of course, naturally, the opponent would be another cube. He's a red cube this time. That symbolizes that he's the opponent. Now, one of the challenges of this project was always going to be the AI for the opponent. So I went ahead and decided working on an AI script. The foundation of this script that I decided on was that we would have a certain number of states for the opponent. So, for example, if he is a defender, his state would be to defend depending on whether or not the player had the ball. Or if he's a midfield player, then he would try and retain the possession and maybe bomb forward to pass the ball to the striker. And then striker would always go towards the goal and shoot. Now, I did have a huge brainstorming session and a lot of thoughts back and forth as to how I wanted this to work and also how complex we wanted it to be. To begin with, we set the basic foundations for the AI of the opponent, and then as the game progressed, we expanded upon that logic. Now, obviously, the first thing we wanted to do was to make sure that the opponent would move towards the goal. No one's seen Ruben like this before. He's past Messi. He's past the goalkeeper. And he... All right, that's the AI script done. That's all That's all you need. Now, let's move to UI. Y UI. The UI for a football game is quite basic. You need some text to track the goals. That's pretty much it, really, isn't it? And that literally is what it. That's literally what I did. I do more stuff later. 
And to make sure that the UI worked, we created some scripts that would register when a goal was scored and make sure it's displayed on the UI. Just add a little bit of audio and BAM! Goal! Look, I actually scored a goal. Whoa, it's fun. This game's fun. But I mean, playing one-on-one, -on -one, it can be fun, but you know what's better? Playing 1v8. Is there a player? I think I made it. Why did I make eight players? I mean, it could be 11 a side or five a side. Eight players! I, I add one player later, I promise. This is old foot footage. It's, it's eight. I'm not stupid. And just like that, we had a match. Where where are you going, bro? Where, the, ball, the ball's over here, bro. Moving back to the AI script, it was time to implement some logic so that we have a moderately challenging opponent. Because at the moment, we have a cube that seems to love poles. So being a coward in terms of coding, I decided the easiest step was to create a goalkeeper because all the goalkeeper really has to do is, you know, move back and forth in front of his goal. That's like the worst goalkeeping tactic ever, but that's what we went ahead with. Then it was time to add some logic for defending. So I just said, you know what? The AI is going to follow the player and that's defending. That's how you defend. Now at the moment, we can only dribble the ball, sort of, because we're a cube. But it'd be great, you know, if we could actually shoot. So I decided to add a script that allows us to shoot. In a nutshell, we just used rigidbody.addForce to add force to the ball and move it forward. Now, I'm not too great at dribbling the ball, and it doesn't help when you're a cube, but there are ways around that. Bam! Piece of code to hold the ball. Now I can dribble all day long. And for those of you who are interested, originally I did decide to use the on-trigger stay to hold the ball, but later on I found it was more flexible using the overlap sphere, uh, just in terms of making it work with the rest of the code in the game. Either that, or I have just no clue what I'm doing, and that's probably exactly what it is. Now that we could dribble like Messi, we were going places. We then added a bit of an audio effect so that it actually sounds like we're shooting. Goal! I also felt like the stadium needed a bit of an upgrade, so I decided to use Pro Builder a bit more to flush it out. And what's a stadium without fans? So, um... Look, fans! I also wanted to liven the game up a bit, so I thought the fans could have some animations. Initially, I did decide to use Unity animations and transitions to create the animations for the fans, but I got into a lot of problems with this, and it's probably not the most efficient thing you can do. Thankfully, we had Lean Tween. For those of you who don't know, Lean Tween just basically allows you to, well, tween between animation. Tween between animate. That's great to say. Tween. Tween between anime. And the great thing about it is, once you get your head around it, you can do all of your animations through code. And you can genuinely see the performance impact, especially when you have a lot of objects that you want to animate. And in my case, it was the fans. While we're on the topic of livening things up, I also felt like the players, the opponents, the ball, the whole stadium needed a bit of customization. And by customization, I mean custom assets. First, I went over to textures.com and I found some decent grass that we can use because every football pitch needs a uh, grass. Given I wanted to make a short, quick game, and I was treating this as a game jam, I went over to poly.google.com and took some assets from there. Bam, you got a ball. Bam, you got some sunglasses. Bam, you got a satellite. Satellite. So shout out to all of these people whose assets I'm pretty much stealing. I mean, borrowing. Bar They're placeholder assets. They're I'm, I'm placeholding them. I'm probably going to use them as placeholders, and depending on whether or not you guys like this game or this idea, then I can go back and create some of my own custom assets. Moving forward with the game, I decided to revisit our AI logic because at the moment, our opponents are what you call poo. So I added a bit of logic so that the opponent can also hold the ball and they can tackle. But the tackling didn't work, neither for me or for the opponent, so I scrapped that. Now you just run into the player and steal the ball. I also felt like the camera needed a bit of a change because the way I was thinking originally for whatever reason was that you'd have a single player, but actually you're playing with a team, you know, because it's a team of eight versus a team of eight. So yeah, the camera had to change. And look, this is the new camera. I also went back and added some more logic to the different states of the opponent. So for instance, when they're defending, they would go back to position when the player was far enough away from them. Now, the second biggest challenge I faced with this game was how I was going to approach passing. Because every football game, you know, requires you to pass the ball. And the passing element would be one of the core aspects of any football game. 
For the opponent AI, I approached the passing in a couple of different ways. It was dependent on what the state of the opponent was. If they were a defender, for example, I would use a for each loop to identify the nearest player and a combination of coroutines to give some time between when to make the pass. And then I would stick with the simple add force to add the pass. However, if the opponent that had the ball was a midfielder or had the state of a midfielder, then they would look to make a forward pass rather than passing between the back. Again, this approach is quite rigid and simple to begin with, but later on we can expand it out to do random passing or to pass based on some sort of different concept or idea. And that's where maybe we can add the idea of formations so that depending on what formation you choose, players will behave differently. Again, keeping this simple, I did not go into that. Now, when it came to the player, we had another decision to make. We could just use a simple add force to the ball and base it on where we're aiming or where we're moving towards. So technically you could just move towards your own player in your team and press the shoot button, the ball would get projected and the player would hold the ball using the hold ball function. And that works and it is quite simple. However, it doesn't lend itself to accurate passing. And if I did decide to build upon this game and flesh it out, I would need something a bit more accurate. So after scratching my hair and almost pulling my hair out several times, I did come across a really good tutorial by Jason Wieman or Wyman. I apologize, Jason, if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but he has a very good tutorial. And actually, overall, it is uh, more of a straightforward script than I thought it was going to be. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire script and I will leave a link to Jason's video in the description. In a nutshell, what we're basically doing with this script is we're identifying the angle between where the player is facing and where the ball is facing. So the angle between that. So that way when we pass to the player, we get more accurate passing. And how we did that was identifying all the other players and looping through each of those players to get the smallest angle. That's as about simply as I can explain it. If you want to learn more, again, I have the link in the description and you can check it out. We did need to tweak ours a bit to add the player movement as the direction. And I probably will need to improve on it later on, but for the moment, it's working fine. So we finally had passing working for both the player and the opponent. However, we did face a slight challenge. We had multiple players on our team, as with any game of football. This meant that we had to apply off the ball movement logic into our code. Because as with any football game like FIFA or PES, you do want to be able to move the player around when your team doesn't have the ball. So I went ahead and set up a off the ball movement script and the idea here would be that we would loop through the players to identify which player was closest to the ball. And again, similar to the player passing script, we use the combination of matf.infinity to identify the furthest player and then work back from there. I also created a small player icon so that we could identify which player was nearest to the ball, i.e. the active player or whenever the player had the ball. Now the next challenge here was how we were going to approach the camera because previously we had a camera tied to a single player and now we wanted the camera to follow the active player. Now I could have just taken the easy route and tied the camera movement to the position of the ball in the game but I did feel like that would mess around with the player's orientation. But the good news is, is we could effectively replicate the same method we did earlier where we loop through each of the players to identify which is the active player and then use uh, linear interpolation or spherical interpolation to basically allow smooth movement between the players so that the camera would smoothly move across the players. And this was the end result. The game was starting to really take shape, however we still had one small problem. Our players didn't really do much when they were off the ball, so we needed to implement a similar form of AI that we had for the opponent but for the players when they weren't the active player. Again, you would see this in games like FIFA or PES. Now I could have just simply copied the opponent AI script but that wouldn't have been too much fun and I wanted to try something different in case I wanted to build upon different concepts later. Now I didn't do anything too special but I did feel like more randomness was needed within the AI script so this time I decided to give the player uh, off the ball movement a bit more randomness. So for instance when our striker or forward had the ball our midfield would move into the opponent's half and they would move into varying positions depending on a random number using random range. And then I had an array of empty game objects which I would position in the opponent's half and our players would alternate between those different positions. Some of the first few attempts well, looked like like this. I mean, the good thing is they're moving in formation. 
I also wanted to add some form of animation to indicate when the player has scored or when the opponent has scored, so, well, we used tweening again for this. After just a small bit of code and a few tweaks, we finally had our goal animation. I also wanted to simulate the kickoff after a goal has been scored, so I decided that it would make sense to restart the scene, and for that we would also have to make sure that the goals are being saved. Because our requirements were quite simple here, I just decided to use player prefs, but typically you probably want to use something like JSON to save your player's uh, information or game details. It did take a bit of tweaking just because I can't code, um, but we eventually got it to work. And finally, we had an actual football game. Wait a minute. I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting something important, am I? Oh, yeah, the, the time. Oh, and when the game finishes. Oh, and showing the re results when the game. So I went ahead and created a match time script to measure the time in the game. Now, typically in a football game, you would have two halves with 45 minutes each. But I was too lazy to code that in. So we have a full 90 minute game. The match time script was simple enough, we just divided the time into effectively seconds and minutes and we had a separate value that would increase the seconds. The reason we had a separate private value is so that we could increment the seconds without having to use floats. At least that's my excuse because I couldn't do it any other way. What would happen is once we hit 60 seconds we would increase the minutes by 1. We also integrated the save system so that if a goal was scored the time would stop and the time would also be saved so when the game restarts it would pick up from where the time left off. Then when we hit 90 minutes we would have a final result pop up and you had the option to restart the match. Oh, and we also added flags. So now you have the orange flag team and the red flag team. Boo, red flag team, go orange. Now there were a few more things I wanted to add to the game just to give it a bit more life and one of these things was sound effects. Because at the moment we just had sound effects for the referee, the fans and shooting. So I went ahead and added a few more sound effects for things like passing the ball when the ball hits off of the wall because our game is sort of indoors kind of with a stadium. And also when the ball hits the post or the goal there would be a sound effect for that too. In addition the ball also felt a bit lifeless when you would shoot it didn't really bounce too much or bounce off the walls. And you know that's not really fun at all so I decided to add a custom physics material that would allow the ball to bounce off the walls a bit more uh, or if you struck it off the post it would bounce a bit more. And although these additions were simple, I do feel the game is a lot more fun and enjoyable as a result. So finally we had an actual football game with cubes where you could score goals, the opponent could try to score a goal. Probably not the most intelligent opponents, but they can score a goal. I've seen them do it, I promise. I'm not, I'm not like, they can actually score a goal. So I probably need to work a bit, well maybe a lot on the opponent AI, but the foundations are there, which is great. And the great thing is I can go back and start building on the AI of both the player and the opponent. Maybe, like I said, create differing AIs depending on the formation that the player chooses. So that could be another option. I was also thinking about creating custom assets for the players so that if you score a number of goals or if you beat a number of teams, you unlock different assets that you can equip to your players. Kind of inspired by the likes of Among Us. So that is Cube Football. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and like the concept or this game or want to see it flesh out into a full game, please let me know by dropping a like on this video, subscribing and hitting the notification sign. That way I know and I can start experimenting and maybe turn this into a fully fledged game. Also, do let me know your thoughts about the video in the comment section or if you've got any ideas, any improvements or just in general if you like the video. Aside from working on this game, your comments really do help me flush out new ideas for new videos and it's also great to see that people are enjoying the content. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Watching. Have some coffee, code, and I will catch you in the next video. Boo, red flag team, go orange.